my name is Tina Danemann Punat. I am a unit leader in the team of Dr. Claudia Stein at the WHO Regional Office for, UN, uh, for Europe in Copenhagen. I lead currently two units on health informatics and on health information. And my talk today actually will focus exactly in bringing together these two aspects uh, of work in their importance in strategic management of both e-health and health information systems to improve both public health and achieve universal health coverage. I'm sorry that I cannot speak with you in person, but I hope that my presentation will contribute to the discussion at your conference. Now, in the WTO European region, the European Health Information Initiative works to improve health by improving health information. Uh, through the EHII, we do this by um, striving to integrate and to harmonize health information, to improve the information flows within the health information systems, so that we would provide better evidence, information, for forming policies and for measuring the success of their implementation. E-health is a part of that. But at WHO, we also see e-health as a key component of achieving universal health coverage. This concept um, of equitable access to healthcare is at the heart of both uh, the European policy framework Health 2020 and also the United Nations S Sustainable Development Goals. What you see in this slide is WHO's scope of thinking about e-health. And when looking at all of these different activities and tools through the lens of universal health coverage, one can see that e-health can contribute to providing services to remote populations. It can facilitate training of the health workforce. It, it can provide accurate and timely patient information through electronic health records. And it can improve the operations and financial efficiency of healthcare systems. And view through the lens of the universal health coverage and looking at the population health, e-health can reach marginalized populations it can reform health information systems, it can offer new modes of healthcare delivery, and it can reduce payments that individuals are forced to make when confronted with ill health. And from this perspective, uh, e-health has become a very powerful strategic asset to be used by the European member states, and they clearly recognize mm, this. This has also come through very clearly in the 2016 e-health report, which mm, our European regional office has published based on the results of the uh, global e-health survey. What the survey clearly indicated was that countries are very actively building on their national e-health foundations to deliver public health and health services in a much more integrated and cross-sectoral manner. Uh, it is also very clear that successful investment in e-health requires more than just technology acquisition. There is a much better understanding by countries that uh, a successful introduction of e-health requires quite a few changes and needs to be based also on some hard learned lessons. Changes are required both to organizational processes, to structures, to roles and standards and legislation, and as well as considerations need to be allowed for human resources, for education, literacy, reimbursement, and the cultural context of health. One last very key finding from the report was that actually funding over any other aspects and across all dimensions is now the biggest barrier to adoption of e-health in the WHO Europe European region. 
uh, this is more so than any legislative, standard-based or technology-specific aspect. Now, there are some key challenges that are being addressed within the scope of e-health in Europe. I grouped them here into three aspects that are most clearly coming out as, as challenges and barriers. In the first group related to governance and, and legislation, there are aspects of um, information and data governance issues related to either data ownership, privacy, consent, interoperability, secondary use of data, and they are becoming significant barriers for introduction of e-health, but actually also use of information. There are also vulnerable population groups, such as children, that are being exploited through digital and social medias, and there's very little policy or regulation addressing this area. And in the area of mHealth, uh, mobile applications lack a system of certification and reimbursement for their use is falling behind demand. In the area of digital literacy, the report also showed quite clearly that digital and health literacy among health professionals and the public are emerging issues that, if they are not sufficiently addressed, can have the potential to increase and not decrease the gap in equitable access to healthcare. A significant percentage of member states are providing some degree of training to students of health sciences and to healthcare professionals on the use of ICT in health, but this is not happening very consistently and the impact is rarely evaluated. Now, from the public health perspective, we work with the national health information systems in, in countries and work with countries to not only assess the functioning of the health information system, but then also to use that information in order to uh, formulate health information strategies in the country. Uh, what you see here, and I will not go into the detail, are the six components of the health information system as per definition by the WHO. Uh, but what is also perhaps not so commonly understood is that a part of the health information system is, is also systematic use and production of information products. So is there access to information, to analysis, is there capacity to interpret the information and to disseminate the various reports, but also to use them in policy making and that there is a systematic way of, of, of translating this information into knowledge and in, in policy decisions. And when we look at the e-health, it actually permeates and touches upon most of, of the components of the health information system. So there definitely is an interface uh, between e-health and public health, which is also what Claudia in her presentation touched upon. I uh, would like to summarize some of the WHO experience when, when working together with the countries on improving and strengthening health information systems. What are the commonly observed strengths and, and challenges in, in health information systems? And in Europe, we do have quite a good foundation in health information systems. There is There are functioning data collection systems. There is dedicated health information system personnel there are increasingly promising developments in the area of e-health and introduction of various uh, solutions for exchange and integration of information in the health information system. And there is uh, an understanding by policymakers in the European region that they do need sound evidence for them to make policy. On the other hand, there are still some challenges in, in, in health information systems. Quite often there is a lack of a clear strategy for the health information system. And I already mentioned earlier that there is an increased demand for multi-sectoral uh, exchange and use of information. And therefore this warrants also more central multi-sectoral coordination mechanism for the health information system in the area of e-health, uh, what is sometimes still um, limited is the aspect of sustainability of the funding for the e-health solutions. And while the policymakers do understand that there is a need for sound 
evidence for their policy making there is not always it is not always the case that the health information is used for for this purpose uh, we at WHO have uh, recognized that public health and e health should go hand in hand and this was uh, underscored last year by the WHO's co-sponsorship of the eHealth Week. You see here our regional director, Dr. Susanna Jakob, opening the, the full week of discussions, where one of the tracks in at the conference was on public health aspects of, of eHealth. And the theme of the conference was data for health. So while on one hand, eHealth is catering to personalized and sustainable healthcare services, the other hand, on the other hand, health information contributes and, and leads to a better uh, public health policies and better management of the health healthcare sector. This strategic aspect was recognized by the member states of the Euro uh, WHO European region in 2016 when they confirmed and adopted an action plan that recognizes that we need to, in the region, strengthen the use of evidence, health information, and research in policy making in the WHO European region. And the first action area that deals with health information system, uh, that that aspect actually also includes e-health, and member states had recognized its importance in the overall health information uh, system. So if we look at that, then of course, uh, one can only address uh, these uh, gaps and align these two domains by managing strategically both the health information system and e-health by also considering aspects from, from both in, in each other. And I would uh, even argue that when e-health considers the public health policy needs and policy priorities within the country, this actually will raise the relevance of e-health solutions and it will focus both demand for e-health solutions and applications, it will focus investment into relevant services and it will focus innovation, which I think also brings much more clarity and a vision for how all of the e-health solutions will be used then of course focusing on the governance over and coordination uh, over e-health and health information system investing in leadership and defining and formulating a strategy and a, and a clear vision these are all key in order to achieving and narrowing the gap between health information systems so public health and and e-health and i would here point out four aspects that i think are important one are achieving and working on integrating health information and ensuring interoperability of information systems. Uh, this will ensure a seamless flow of, of uh, information across various systems, it will allow analysis at any level of the information system by any uh, stakeholder, be it uh, a patient, be it a healthcare facility manager, a healthcare professional, public health experts, or, or a policymaker. Uh, the second area deals with the information. What does the what does it mean? What is being exchanged? And here we need to focus on harmonization of information. The third aspect is something that relates to what I had now mentioned several times. There needs to be a high level multi-sectoral coordination mechanism established that involves all stakeholders that either generate or use health information. And the fourth aspect deals with digital li literacy and improving the culture of using the information smartly by all of society. So I would then argue actually that a good e-health strategy will always link and consider the wider health information system but i would add here actually it will also consider the broader information society and the infrastructure that uh, is emerging and the culture of information consumption that is growing also in the wider society i would like to look at 
just a couple of examples of national e-health strategies from other countries. The first country that I'd like to present is Denmark. It has an e-health strategy that used as a highly polished public communication and advocacy tool for the changes and for the investment that the government is making in, in e-health. And it consists of a clear structure with five high-level focused areas. Now, what is interesting is that in, in Denmark, the e-health strategy is actually only a part of a collection of digital strategies that the government has uh, committed to. For example, we look here at the Danish health portal. This is one-stop shop for healthcare service providers for patients. And this portal is actually linked bro more broadly and interfaces with the rest of the e-government services that Denmark has introduced. Perhaps the interesting part is the strategic definition of the four dimensions that are important on how they would achieve an integrated health portal with integrated health information. One aspect deals with uh, participatory development, both engagement of all stakeholders and also co-development of solutions between public and private stakeholders. The second dimension focuses on common infrastructure and systems. All of this is linked and managed by a joint strategy and investments uh, and solutions. And the fourth dimension has to do with developing and maintaining a culture of trust among all of the stakeholders involved and encouraging the will to change and the courage to adapt to the change. Now, the next country is Ireland. And this e-health strategy, again, is expressed in a different way. It proposes seven actions that would need to be implemented in order to implement the, the objectives of the strategy. What is interesting is that it focuses on outcomes and describes them on different stakeholder groups. It recognizes very much that governance is key in order to enable the implementation of the strategy. And it also recognizes that there is a great need to re-engineer and change work practices and processes. And if we look even further, I put into the next two slides the five action areas that are outlined in the Irish e-health strategy. What I would point out here is that, again, here you, you can see in the point two that the strategy establishes a goal to strongly brand eHealth Ireland and all the activities underneath and advocate for its importance. You see here that the national priority projects uh, emphasize the common national health identifier that allows for integration of the systems across the health information system and e-health, e-prescription, online referrals and scheduling, and tele, uh, telecare. The, with regards to the, re the need for, for re-engineering of the processes, you'll see that the um, work streams in number four are very much touching on this. And what is also interesting is the fifth point, which is that um, the strategy requires that each government department and agency that have a role in either generating or using e-health solutions must develop strategies to uh, or an action plan that will define how they will do so. Now, the third country is Kyrgyzstan. And here, the e-health strategy is again expressed in a completely different way. Kyrgyzstan used the WHO and United Nations uh, International Telecommunications Union's National eHealth Strategy Toolkit to express its strategy and action plan for implementation of eHealth in the country. And it starts with a very pragmatic statement of vision. Its main focus is on achieving and delivering an integrated health information system for the country. And the last country, is Finland. And Finland, again, has a different way of expressing the e-health 
uh, strategy. And what is interesting is that the e-health strategy is very much connected to what they call e-social strategy. But what is interesting is that the strategy also addresses international aspects of integrating the services across the borders of Finland, not just the national focus. It very much focuses on enabling and empowering individuals, accessing and using information for what they need. So citizens need it for their own information and as service users, the healthcare professionals. The strategy refers to use of information and knowledge and very big emphasis is given to steering and cooperation governance in information management. And Claudia mentioned before that actually Finland isn't even stopped there. They had actually integrated fully information from various sectors and health information doesn't stand alone in silos. They, it is actually integrated uh, across sectors and used for policy. So. I will stop here, perhaps just several points from just looking at the e-health strategies. I would summarize by saying that um, while e-health solutions are patient-centered, they must also contribute to public health and to the needs of policymakers. The third point is not new to any informatician. The usefulness of any solution can be ensured only by involving the actual users of the system. And if we now expand this idea to the health information uh, system in general, of course, by involving all stakeholders, not only patients and healthcare professionals, but also public health professionals and the policymakers, this will ensure that there is bigger uptake and more support uh, for the health information system and e-health as a whole. And of course, seamless exchange of information across the systems will allow that information will be used across sectors when relevant by all of the parts of the society and of a core across all of the levels of the health sector. Now, thank you very much. I, I hope that this was this will spark some discussion and here is my email address if you would like to discuss with me or share with me any of your experience and uh, I wish you a successful conference. Thank you very much.